Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So right now we're standing in our new house, uh, it's pretty nice, there's lots of space, no I'm just kidding. Um, we, we are actually in a village, I was hopping around, there's one thing in particular I was looking for, I could technically make it, which may be what we do if I don't find what I'm looking for, but anyways there was a monastery here and there is a peace candle in here. So I'm kind of low on inventory space, but I think I can make space for a peace candle because these will of course keep mobs from spawning within a certain radius i think in i want to say in this pack it's a three by three chunk radius but i could be wrong so i'm still looking around this village i checked the blacksmith they didn't really have what i was looking for um, and now night is setting so i might i might head back home um, i know i don't have the xp to teleport though so I'm going to have to run it. Um, those are nice because there's a lot of wood in those, but I don't really have the space for it. Um, let's see. Home is where the heart is. It is 12,000 blocks over there. Okay. I did mark this. Uh, so once we have XP, we can easily teleport back. I just don't really have a lot of XP at the moment. Um, basically, just what my, pull, my tools are pulling in is really all I've got. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to start... Heading back, I was actually looking for an immersive engineering building, ideally. Um, there's one of those, but I really don't have need of it right this second. Because uh, I know it's not going to have what I'm looking for, so. But that's fine. I mean, what, what I need, we can craft. But what we're going to do, starting out this episode, we are going to get into building. But uh, before we do that, there's one thing I'd like to make. Since we have some power, um, we are going to use that power for something that's just going to make our lives a whole lot easier. I got to thinking um, while I was editing the video, which the the uh, the windmill build will be coming out. Uh, you guys will have already seen it by the time this is out, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably by a few days. I don't know when this will be coming out at the moment. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And I've been battling with the Windows update the struggle is real <laughs> ever since I updated that everything has been a bit sluggish so uh, I gotta try to get some work done with that but I decided I'd go ahead is that all crystals that is a that is the top of a dragon layer right here a big one a big underground one with all the emeralds and diamonds and stuff okay I'm gonna mark this as dragon underground all right and let's start heading back to home. But like I said, that's fine. We're just going to go ahead and craft the stuff that we need to get this, to get our very first machine. Um, I did catch on the, when I was editing the replay footage, I did check, or I did catch that uh, my windmill wasn't, uh, the roof wasn't all there. All right. All right, so our peace candle, I'm just going to drop this like, uh, right I'm just going to drop it like right here. So that way it can kind of keep some mobs away. Um, I feel like once we get the kitchen build out of the way, we should go ahead and like start right into a warehouse build. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm feeling like. Um, okay, so what I want to make is a solenoid, a copper solenoid from Nuclear Craft. Um, like I said, I don't think I have any of these. They're usually pretty common finds. I just haven't found one yet. Uh, which is fine, but I'm going to need two aluminum rods. I've got one right here. Um, I can make these with a small plate presser. Um, aluminum sheet metal, four aluminum plates. Yeah, there's that recipe too, but that just consumes everything. So um, let's do this. So we just need a piston and a block of obsidian. And then we need three iron. Ba-boom, ba-boom. There's our small plate presser. And we'll put that right there. Aluminum sheet metal there. Lever. Boom. And there we go. There is our rods. 
And then I think we can use this to make dust, right? Um, let's see. Is that enabled in this pack? Yeah. So we can or double that way as well um, using that little system. Okay, so now that we've got that, now that we've got those, uh, we need four copper plates and then we need uh, this right here. So um, five copper plates in total. And actually for the mixed metal, that's bronze. Iron 10, okay. We can also do that, but that's a loss because um, you're basically wasting an ingot doing this, but you don't use the durability on the hammer, so there's that, but, uh, okay, so I'm going to take that, I'm going to take uh, those, and then our six bronze, and then we need all the copper, which I don't have the copper cooked up. Let me go ahead and just get this. We might have to automate this. It's not super difficult to automate. Because really all you got to do is place blocks, pick up the items, and give it redstone. So, Okay, so there's that. Let's go ahead and get that smelting up. And then I've got to get all these turned into plates. Okay, so... There's that, and then one of these is going to become casings, and then we can make our copper solenoids. Okay, so now that we got these, I actually only need one of these, and I want to make a manufactory. So we're going to need four layup, redstone, flint, piston, okay. All right, so there is our manufactory. Awesome. Industrializing advancement. And so now what we can do is let me get a couple things. Let me get a, uh, a hopper. Aluminum plates, iron plates, chest. Okay. Okay, I need an LV wire connector. I need one of these LV wire coils. Hey, there's my iron plates. That's okay. I thought I had some of those lying around, but that's fine. We'll need them in due time, so... And besides, it's not like metals are an issue at all. And now kind of we got ore doubling, so there's that. So mainly just wanted it for making rods though. Um, okay, so what we are going to do is I guess just for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our chest. I'm gonna do a double chest setting there. And this will probably get changed. This is probably going to get ran all the way down. I just don't, don't really. I didn't bring my relays and all that mess. So, um, let's do the hopper there, feeding into the back of this chest. We're going to have the manufactory setting there. Um, our LV wire connector setting here, and then we're just going to connect this up. Boom, boom, like that. So this is building up power, and then our hopper sitting here with our trap chest boom no, not exactly not exactly like that and then boom like that and then what we can do is we can throw in say oak wood and that's going to start running and the nice thing is this makes uh through the manufactory we're producing six planks per oak wood so it's not going to be yeah it's going to back up here because we need faster item transport but that's fine I'm getting six, six planks per wood instead of two planks per wood. And then I can, I think I can take this and run it through the manufactory again. Actually, I think that's how we did it before, right? On oh, Enigmatica the last time. And we can make sticks. I think this is the machine that we used. Or maybe we used the sawmills or something. I can't remember. But, um, so I got cheaper sticks by a huge amount. One plank for four instead of the normal two planks per four. Or on this pack, two planks for two, you know. Um, so we can make all of our sticks and wood because we're going to be making with the kitchen We're going to be making a lot of stuff that requires wood um, That's going to be you know walls and different things like that and then also lots and lots of storage drawers, so I didn't want to have to Do all that at two planks per wood because that's just gonna be terrible and since we got power last episode yay 
Um, at first, I didn't know what I was going to do with the power. Then I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably get better wood production. So that's what our windmill is for now. Um, now, at some point later on, I may run that all the way down. So it's, you know, the, the power's ran all the way down the windmill because that's what we left that opening for. Uh, but we shall see. So, but okay, so I'm going to get some things together. I've got a bit more wood to cut. I did cut a lot of like birch and um, it's actually, well, it's in one of these backpacks. Yeah, there's some birch, there's some oak. Um, I actually need to get spruce planted. All right, I'm going to get a bit of spruce and a bit of dark oak planted, kind of near where we're going to be setting up. Now, where we're going to be building the kitchen area slash food warehouse area is actually going to be uh, up in here. So kind of like before you enter this section, which will be more like the main base, we're gonna have this big food warehouse, which eventually will actually just be a warehouse. But for now, uh, it's also going to be our kitchen. I mean, the kitchen's go the kitchen part's going to stay, but eventually it probably won't be as, you know, used as much for that purpose because we'll have it all automated through like AE2 or whatever. But yeah, for now, uh, we'll put this into here, so. Okay, so I'll be back once I get everything together. Okay, so starting out, I'm just kind of plotting out where this is going to go. My idea is it's going to be part warehouse, part kitchen. Because, um, of course, this is all kind of on the outskirts of the town. Of course, historically, a lot of, a lot of farms would be set, you know, on the outside of the town proper, right? Because that way you've got all this big open land to work with. And that's kind of what we're going with. We've kind of got these farms kind of sit away or sit outside the main gate of the town uh, and kind of wrap around through all this flat land. So we're just kind of plotting this out. This is going to be sort of a, a kitchen area. So all the workers from uh, the farmlands and, and the stuff kind of outside the town, then people also coming into the town and people coming out of the town can stop and eat here. Um, but it's also going to be a warehouse and my idea is to have it kind of defended so that, you know, people can't raid it, at least easily. Um, of course, the building will mostly be wood, so I guess technically they could burn it, but then they run the risk of burning, you know, all the food inside. So it's unlikely that they would burn it. <laughs> at least I hope not. Um, but kind of just a, an outside the city sort of warehouse. So is what I'm going for. So I've plotted out the general structure. Now, right now I'm adding what's going to be on the second floor, kind of sitting above um, the warehouse itself and originally I had a couple different ideas of how I was going to do this uh, but I'm pretty happy with the way that uh, that we ended up setting it up because originally it was going to be almost kind of thir uh, three floors uh, in the kitchen at one point I was actually going to put it on the back of the building but then I changed my mind and I decided to put it on the second floor kind of give us a different sort of shape and style to this building um, and so that way I don't know it was a little bit more interesting so um, right here, I'm clearing out the bottom. Um, once again, it doesn't replay doesn't uh, act totally correctly um, when I'm trying to, to replay the footage. But uh, so I've just kind of spun the camera around so you guys can kind of see what's going on. But I'm plotting out the floor. Of course, we'll have a closer look at this a little bit later. I tried to build the building sort of. Um, bringing it up as as we did things that way it was easier to catch with replay footage because of course tight quarters and stuff like that uh, is hard to deal with especially in this version of replay it's a little bit easier to do in the 1.14 version and of course there's no pause which is kind of a bummer um, but I actually brought the floor out as reinforced stone which is a combination of cobblestone and wood we've been using a lot of wood and cobblestone that's gonna be kind of the the theme of outside the town because it's cheap, easy, and it's kind of our initial building material that we've got access to, easy access to. Um, so I've brought it all out as reinforced stone, different types of reinforced stone uh, down through there, and the width of the building, like if you're looking at it from the front to the left to the right, it's 20, uh, or actually the building is 27 wide, okay? And that, that means that the interior section is 25 wide, which is just enough so that the drawer controller could cover the entire range of that area so uh, that way everything is nice and nice and covered <laughs> and we have access to basically the entire room's worth of drawer units so right now I'm bringing out the walls I decided to use slabs they are oak uh, chiseled oak slabs or chiseled oak plank slabs um, 
and that way we can have the wall kind of recessed um, into into the uh, yeah <laughs> into the thing so it just makes it a little bit more interesting from the outside we still have to add a little by the end of this we still have to add a little bit more detail I was just kind of running out of time for this week oh why is it doing this why is it going down is it uh, it's not supposed to do that but anyways like I said it was kind of hard to uh, to get all this plus I had trees growing right out here um, <laughs> this tree's gonna be right in the way I apologize guys um, I've got some stuff I'm gonna do I'm, I've, I'm ordering some more memory for my computer because maybe the update is just really resource intensive I don't know because I'm hoping that I can get some things sorted but it's been this update I hate Windows updates sometimes. Um, but anyways, you can see I've actually brought out all the drawers I cut for a little bit there um, to get those made. They're actually made with sunken marble and uh, spruce wood for the drawers. We'll take a closer look at those a little bit later. Um, but I brought those throughout. And right now I've actually got the architect's hammer and I'm just basically smoothing out the walls and, uh, and whatnot. Got all that smoothed out. And then, uh, because they all had to be turned, because it's actually couldn't really place them uh, that way unless I put blocks behind them so and then right now I'm actually just running some more pillars out and kind of shaping up the bottom floor I know it's a little bit hard to see up here but there we go now I'm starting to work on the ceiling for the bottom floor which is actually uh, dark oak scaffold uh, and then cut into slabs for the ceiling up there and then um, basically get all that laid out and that way we can start putting the floor up here so, and, um, oh, I start with the roof, though. The roof is going to be a combination of spruce and cobblestone. And, of course, both are chiseled. It's like uh, spruce planked and then cobblestone small bricks. And I'm actually bringing these up, and then um, now I'm placing the spruce for the wall, which I actually end up um, expanding out, um, I think, right here. Yeah, I bring the roof out so that the spruce is kind of inset into the roof, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more detail. Plus, it makes that cobblestone a little bit thicker and a little bit more, uh, you know, interesting to look at. And then I bring just lines of cobblestone around uh, to shape up the roof here. And then I add this section on the top. So that's kind of what our roof looks like. And then I added, uh, a little bit later, I added on some skylights um, in those two open sections. So just a little bit more interesting than just, a, you know, a simple roof style. I think and then right here we're gonna add the tower bit to the top of this little uh, watchtower that's kind of on the front um, because I, I imagine this building would have like a little watchtower so that uh, anybody coming up on the warehouse will be spotted uh, of course it's only on the front section but the only entrance to the warehouse is through the front section so and then I'm just bringing this up once again same kind of roof um, or actually it's dark oak on that so it's dark oak on that it on the camera here I apologize <laughs> I'm trying to make the best of it that I can since it, the editing is just really really awkward at the moment um, I'm starting to think and like I said I need to get more memory for my computer I mean I'm running 16 gigs but uh, I don't know I've tried to repair a bunch of stuff and just do some work but it's like I actually crashed while trying to edit this at one point because it was like you're out of memory I'm like <laughs> what like how is it even possible that wasn't even possible. So, um, anyways, anyways, um, now we're adding some windows to the bottom section. These are light gray glass, and then I'm using the architect's uh, architect bench uh, window frames just to give it a little bit more detail. So, bringing that out, and then also brought up a railing up around the top. Um, and this was basically the work so far was pretty much like over the course of like two days but the the next little bits took a couple days which I didn't get all those in because they were just like little bits kind of working through here and there we're about to lose it there but um, that's spruce spruce wood up along uh, the floor so we kind of got spruce wood flooring and you can see where I'm putting in the skylights right there and then I brought the camera around so we can get a better look um, see so it's the kind of the smoother um, style spruce on the on the floor on the second floor so that way it's kind of open um, we will give we will put a little cover over the top of that but that way people can come up here and they can eat and everything and then have the kitchens 
sections on the interior part of that little uh, structure there on the roof. So, but that's kind of the general look. And then um, basically, I go through uh, just off camera. I go through and I do a bunch of detailing over a couple days, um, just adding all the little bits that kind of come together for that upper section, especially. Okay, it has been a few days <laughs> since I was working on the building because I've just been going through uh, bit by bit and detailing a little bit. I'm not entirely done, um, but I decided that I was going to go ahead and record this bit because this video is already going to be like Sunday coming out, I think. Um, I had a lot of issues this week and um, between the Windows update and having to update tons of stuff and fix issues and do a bunch of reinstallation on some stuff that got corrupted <laughs> just it's been it's been wild it has been absolutely wild um that's like the last let's see that's like the last episode of enigmatica um i had a lot of issues with because i had to edit it twice and i had to cut out some of the footage it's just Okay, <laughs> anyways, anyways, so this is where we're at right now. Uh, you, you'll notice the walls are still kind of bland. I've got to figure out what I want to put on those because since I've got slabs on these sections, I'm either going to have to push this out, which I could do. It's not really a big issue. Uh, push this out, maybe do some banners draping down, something like that. Uh, I don't really have the wool. It took... The, <laughs> the stuff that I've done so far has taken forever. It has. Uh, of course, right now we don't have a lot of materials, mainly wood and stone and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, setting up that manufactory at the beginning of the episode was a great call um, because I used up a ton of wood uh, between, uh, well, with the house, but also just decorating um, what I've decorated so far. And uh, I guess I could have teleported up here, but you'll notice that this thing is just filled up with wood and... Uh, sticks and stuff like that so anyways uh, this thing is great it makes the wood go extremely far and plus going primarily with um, spruce on this building helped out a lot as well because spruce is very very easy for us to farm at the moment with our lumber axe um, I also used a bit of iron wood you can see I planted some of that out here not a whole lot but uh, just a bit so, and this glass is light gray glass. We set that up in the video, if I recall. Um, back here, I added a little storage area because this, this section here was kind of flat. So, I added a little storage section back here. Um, just basically just a pile of clutter is all it is. Like, um, you know, whenever stuff's brought over here, you know, it's piled from the farms. It's piled up back here kind of a thing. And then um, over here, I added a little bit more clutter right here. And then upstairs, basically this is like a little kitchen area. So we've got a little dining section for all the workers in the field um, to come up here and eat, basically. And, you know, they can have a seat and they can eat their food and then go on back to work. Uh, this is kind of a little guard tower just because this is our food warehouse, so we don't want anybody storming it. So we've got this little guard tower where archers can hang out um, and guard the front. And that's the only entrance into the warehouse is that front entrance there. So... Um, this is, of course, hoping that they don't burn the place down <laughs> because it's primarily wood. But um, anyways, it just made this front kind of a little bit more interesting. Um, you'll notice I did add some carpet over some sections of the table. Not the entire thing, but this is so if it is raining, you know, there's still a place to get out of the rain um, for the workers to come in and eat. So they've got a few tables here that are covered. Um, turn some of the chairs and different things like people are talking. Um, over here, I did set up the basis of a kitchen. We still have to dye these kitchen counters and corners, um, but we'll do that. Um, I'm not really sure what color I want to go with. Maybe even just like a brown uh, would be okay, maybe. Um, and then I set up fridges, and these are actually kind of duplicated on the other side. This is just decorative. These are fruit baskets, and we're putting fruit in them. But all I have right now is apples, really. So <laughs> these other three are empty at the moment. Uh, but anyways, we've got fridges here. We're going to set these up with um, the ice, uh, not the ice unit. Well, we will probably use ice units, but I want the uh, the fridge upgrades, prevents the last, or the preservation up, uh, chambers. 
uh, these right here. I do want to add these to the fridges, so we're going to craft those up here in just a second. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty much duplicated, but I figured we've got a lot of workers in the field, so maybe we need, you know, double kitchens going on so people can come in and say, you know, hey, I want this, and they can whip it up back there. Um, of course, this is all pretty much just decorative. So, and then trying to, trying to build right now, uh, using what minimal resources we have available and that aren't, you know, super expensive. So a lot of wood, a lot of cobblestone. Uh, downstairs, we did use reinforced stone. So if we head down there, um, and this, actually, these are stair blocks, but I did this because uh, the stairs made out of uh, this stone, whenever you, you know, whenever you make stairs, it kind of compacts the texture on these. And um, so anyways, I, I did stair blocks, and they're facing inwards. That way we got the compacted texture on the side. I am going to add some stuff to this side just to make it a little bit more interesting, because right now it's just a big chunk of cobblestone right there. Uh, but like I said, I... <laughs> I had to stop a little bit because otherwise it was going to be like after so, probably Monday or something, maybe Tuesday before this came out. So this has taken forever. It's taken way longer than it should have, but like I said, I had a lot of technical difficulties during this week. Also learning a new editing program, so that's been cool. Um, up here, I'm not sure what I'm going to stick up here. It could just be clutter, really. But uh, this is our storage unit area. So these are made of sunken marble and then just spruce wood on the sides so and then I left these tops I didn't build drawers all the way up to the wall because it just looks ugly so I left this open so we can add like little stuff up here like little knick-knacky things or something um, up along here just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting so even just chests and barrels and things like that up here um, and then this is all connected up that's actually spruce trim it it's, says it's oak trim it always does that but um, basically it is brought under the floor from the back side here and there is uh, actually under these is uh, spruce trim all the way around the uh, the area of the room so all of these are connected that's why I built this building like this because this is 25 wide which is if the drawer controller is in the very center that is the maximum distance so the building is actually 27 wide uh, these are on the the first and 27th blocks um, with the 25 by 25 inside of it so but uh, yeah so let's go ahead it's yeah see all these walls are really bland right now we're gonna we're gonna get that but anyways <laughs> we've got a we've got a little bit of a building going so that's cool a um, little bit of a different style but uh, I think it's gonna line up it kind of it does kind of match our windmill which is kind of what I was going with uh, of course our windmill is a lot of cobblestone and wood and I think that's going to be the general look of the field, you know, the, the farm area is a lot of just cobblestone wood, kind of cheaper materials, but it's kind of like the outskirts of town, kind of like a farming type area. The inside's going to be <laughs> a bit more uh, fancy blocks, so. But let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple things. First up, I want a drawer controller, I think. Um, now these are going to be a little bit expensive. We're going to have to get skystone blocks. You know what? I have not went out and found skystone yet. So we're going to have to do that. Um, we're going to need a drawer. We're going to need a diamond. We're going to need a couple redstone engineering blocks. So we're going to have to get ourselves some Constantan. Um, can I not? Uh, there we go. Constantan is one part nickel, one part copper for two parts Constantan. Okay, so I'm going to need like eight Constantan. And by the way, both those kitchens, they are connected. So I can melt the, okay, cool. Um, both those kitchens are connected. I'll show you whenever we go back over there, I'll show you how I did that. Basically, I just made the kitchen floor and I ran it through underneath the, the spruce and that's why there's those trap doors on top. It's not on both sides, but I'll show you that whenever we pop over there. I can't remember I've got some drawers left I made um, when I was working on that I made four stacks of drawers so and then this is any kind of stone we need four grout and uh, clay dust which we can do it like that through the manufactory which I think will be how we do it okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and run this through the manufactory Boom. Okay. All 
right, so there's our IC2 reinforced stone. And then we just need the drawer. Okay, now I've got to go out and find some sky stone. Which, uh, hopefully, hopefully doesn't take too long. Well, let's actually take a look and see what it takes to make a compass. I think that the, uh, charge start is an iron. Okay, so that's standard. Okay, yeah, it looks like, uh, let me put this in the offhand, looks like these do spawn in the world. Okay, so right down here. Let's just dig down and see if we can find one. Yes. Okay, I've got inventory space. Give me just a second while I get all this mined out. Okay, i tell you what, I'm going to come back to this place later. Um, if you teleport, it drops the thing that's in your offhand. Oh well. It's cheap anyway, so I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so we've got our sky stone. Go ahead and get a little bit of that smelted up. There we go. There's our drawer controller. Whoot. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need, each of those has six, so I'm going to need 12. Uh, 12 preservation upgrades. Okay, right now I'm just waiting for stone to smelt up. Um, there's seven. And then we can drop these in here and get our preservation upgrades. They don't stack, so I might as well go ahead and just grab those. And we'll just warp over. I said a teleport to project is what I called it. Uh, and that way we could just warp back and forth pretty easy. It does, it does speed things up a lot. Okay, so up here, and I'm going to show you, I forgot to show you this. So these are actually frame trap doors from Block Craftery. So you can see that the kitchen floor runs up underneath those. Uh, not on this side, though. That's just so that it matches, basically. Um, our preservation upgrades, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I'm going to hold on to that one for right now. And then our drawer controller, which once this is all set up, we'll be able to access everything, um, you know, just from this side. Because what I'm going to do is, if you recall, when we did uh, Enigmatica 2 before, I had my fridges with preservation upgrades set up to conduits that fed from the drawer system, right? I'm basically going to do that again. So the, the conduits are going to feed up to here, and then, you know, that way there's always things slotted in there and they can't be pulled out and yada yada and it'll have you know keep a stack of all these different things on hand so and then our drawer controller we're just going to drop in right there so everything's linked up to the same drawer network and so then what i can do is uh well actually this stuff should be done let me pop on home real quick and we should be able to get our other Preservation upgrades. Boom. Then long term, we probably won't even be entering the warehouse once it's all set up for automation. But for right now, we will be. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And I'd like to get some ice units in those, but uh, that's not a big, that's not a big, big rush. I'd also like to get some cow in a jars as well. Um, okay, so now what we can do is we can pop over and... Let's go harvest ourselves up some different things. So we'll start with these. And we got it. We have to keep expanding fields, but I wanted to get the storage building in because whenever I go out and I collect, um, you know, the various PAMs things, I'm basically, I'm going to, whenever I get back, I can now right click the drawer controller. If it goes somewhere, then that means we've already planted it because we're only going to put stuff in the drawers that has a field, um, you know, that's set up for it, right? And that's, and so then everything else um, that doesn't go into the drawer controller, that means that uh, it needs a field, and we can put it into a two-plant drawer, and then we'll know that that stuff needs to be planted, basically. That's why I wanted to get this area, well, I wanted to get this area set up for two reasons. First up, 
three resins actually. I wanted a place to store up all these things that we're going to be gathering up. So, you know, we can actually start stockpiling up uh, different food items. I also wanted a way to easily filter through whenever I go out exploring what's already been planted and what hasn't been planted. Um, I've got to get these walls put in so animals quit jumping. They keep jumping off of these. Um, and then I also wanted a way that we can easily make food because right now we cannot easily make food. So, which right now until we get conduits set up, which we are going to start working towards those before too long um, to make our food work a whole lot easier. But uh, I'm not going to gather up all these, by the way. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm just gathering a few stacks of things and then that way we've got it. There's so much food planted out here. It's just ridiculous just ridiculous I, I am starting to think I want to get fertile soil but you know I found those bone blocks between uh, between episodes or no at the beginning of this episode yeah I found bone blocks beginning of this episode and uh, so I'd really like to get that stuff um, go get those bone blocks so for example if we put onions in there and we right click say onions this is linked up if we come over here and we do onions boom there goes the onions they're linked up. Um, everything should be linked up well. And then if we, um, yeah, well, it's all linked up. So if it, if it reaches this, then it definitely, because basically it comes back and it goes around this room in corners. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start right here. So we're going to say onions. Uh, we're going to say tomatoes. We're going to say chili peppers. Spice leaves. Uh bell peppers and carrots and there we go everything's dumped in there and I want to make one other thing real quick let's pop back home and I want to make a key so we're gonna need this two gold and a nugget easy enough and then while we're over here, we need to take a look at cooking for blockheads because I need two of the cooking tables. Um, so it's just like this, that's like that, that's a smelted book. Okay. And I'm also going to need 10 more terracotta. I'm so tired of making that stuff. <laughs> Luckily, we're just about done. This has been, this episode has taken a while, if you couldn't tell. Oh, you know what I just thought of though? I didn't even think about this between episodes. There was a mesa near us. So we could have just went over to the mesa and got all this terracotta. Whoops. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so there's one cooking table. And that terracotta is still cooking up. That's fine. Let's pop over to here. Oh, we got a quest complete. This right here, cooking for blockheads. We've done all that. We get a loot chest. Ba-boom. And what did we get from our loot chest? Uh, signal and plated impulse item ducks. That's actually kind of nice. Whoa, 48 of them. Um, does transfer redstone as or redstone flux as well. Okay, well, we've got this. We're going to go ahead and just right click and lock all of our drawers so that other riffraff can't get in there. That's cool. And then um, we'll just pop up. And I'm going to go ahead and drop down our cooking table. This one is going to go, say, right here. And that way we can craft these different things. And what I'm going to have to do is, let me go dump off all this stuff real quick. There's so much junk in here. There really, really is. I did make chisel bit bag and diamond chisel. And I didn't end up using it, but I made it because I thought I was going to use it at one point, but then I didn't. Um, hey, this is done. Okay, now I'm going to go gather up a little bit more food basically the food that we haven't gotten yet I mean I'm gonna gather a bunch of this between episodes but just so we can get the rest of this stuff locked into the drawers okay now I got all that stuff um, stuff like industrial hemp I am going to slot the seeds as well um, seeds of course do have uses and then um, also it's just gonna make it a whole lot easier whenever we're harvesting things so that we can just dump all the seeds and everything um, all together you know so that's what all we've got so far so we'll just go ahead and dump all that into there. Awesome. And then I'm going to grab uh, one stack of all these things. 
seeds included not industrial hemp because we're not gonna be eating industrial hemp okay there we go and and then let me grab no wait, it's three of these and we'll get our other cooking table boom awesome Okay, so our cooking table is going to go over here. The, basically, the reason I want this is so that we can access this, you know, regardless of which side we come up to. Uh, probably this side, usually, I'm sure. But, um, and then we're going to go ahead and just dump a stack of all of these things into here. And our preservation upgrade is going to make sure that we never use up all of it so we'll know what goes in what slot. And then we can access this, of course, and make our food. So right now we can make pizza slices, stock, roasted root, veggie medley. Uh, noodles and mustard and all that stuff now I've got to make all of our bakeware um, or all of our cookware from Pam's I'm just gonna make this between episodes there's not much reason for us to craft this on camera uh, but we need to make one two three four five six seven eight all of these and I've actually got uh, tool racks there tool rack there there and there and I've got them on both sides I'm gonna make two sets just because um, you know for looks these kitchens are all connected though. The main reason they're connected is so that we can have our preservation upgrades in these different fridges and have basically um, 12 fridges full of different materials um, related to cooking. So that's what all that's for. Now if we go back over to cooking for blockheads, there's one other thing I want to do this episode before we end out. Uh, I want to get, does it have to be, no it's any kind of glass, cool, milk and um, wood. Okay, awesome. So we need to make ourselves a jar. And I'm actually gonna want a few of these because they're not super fast on their own. But now that we have a cooking for blockheads kitchen, we can start making use of this. Now, one thing I am going to need is an anvil. Uh, these are standard, awesome. But I am gonna have to, we're gonna set up one of these automated ones uh, once we set up our forge. So that might be the next building that we work on is the forge. I mean, I'd like to get a house, but Honestly, the first house we're going to make is going to be like a little farmhouse out there in the farms. Because we're working in that area so much. Uh, the forge that we set up, the first forge, is actually probably going to be out in the farm area. Because a little farm area would probably have a forge on hand for making things like, you know, tools and um, horseshoes. And just little things like that that they would need at the farm. So I think we're going to set up a forge out there. That way we can kind of keep working in that area and not, you know, be running you know over to here you know because that's would just be a little bit awkward so we will have another forge over here but it doesn't hurt because of course we're going to have so many different machines and stuff running um, as the pack progresses that we're going to need multiple forges so that's not going to hurt anything all right so let's grab our anvil boom and then we have to go get our milk jar or our milk uh, bucket, I mean. So let's go like that. And that, that, that. And then what we need to do is, oh, quest complete, count a jar, apparently. Oh. Yeah, uh, we get a loot chest, four cow bait, and a spawn cow, and we get a choice. Um, that's kind of useless. That's kind of useless. I mean, that's super easy to make. So we've got a big farm. So let's take just take the loot chest, and uh, boom! Oh, <laughs> what in the world? We got a cow in a jar. What kind of luck is that? I still want to go ahead and get this one though. Yeah, you stand on top of that, you, and then we'll just put the anvil above it, drop it, boom. There is our other cow in a jar. And so that means now, oops, I'm just tearing up everything right now. That means that all of this can go, well, no, I'm going to leave it because if I'm going to want to entice more cows over um, with more animal bait. So I should leave that there for now. But let's go ahead and we're going to toss this like there. Okay, so that's going to start filling up with milk slowly, and it can store up to 
8,000 millibuckets. Now, one thing I am probably going to do is set one of these up a little bit later, or a few of these that are connected up with fluid conduits that basically store up bulk amounts of milk. Uh, but for now, just setting these up uh, should be fine for our needs. And then I'll probably set up another one there on both sides. So we'll have four cow in a jars going, um, possibly more, it depends. But uh, for now, well, I'll actually probably set up four more. I'll have one here too. All right, so we've almost got a thousand millibuckets of milk. And then we can see in here that we've got access to our milk. There we go. And so now we can start making um, yogurt and uh, fresh milk. This is what I suggest you make it, make every time is that and then store the fresh milk like that because it's just going to go a lot further um, because each of those count as a bucket of milk. So um, that's what we're going to do. Now it's a whole lot faster. That's the reason we didn't make these initially. It's a whole lot faster if you just have a cow and you milk it. But now we're kind of at the point where we're actually starting to get into cooking with blockheads. So it's going to be a lot more beneficial for us to have it all in one spot. So we'll have, uh, you know, our six plus cows in a jar um, over here. So, um, but anyways, with that, I think I'm going to end out this episode here. Um, what we got set up today is going to be super, super useful for us as, and it's really going to kind of allow us to start really expanding the farm because I can go out and I can find things and I'll know in an instant if they've already been planted or not, right? Because we've pretty much got everything in here that's been planted, you know, already slotted in. Oh, I don't have flax though. I should get flax. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so I can I can figure out really, really quick if stuff's been planted or not, which is going to help us out a lot. I know this building's kind of plain at the moment. I'm going to keep adding some things to it, uh, you know, between episodes and stuff. Maybe, um, maybe get it all done between episodes. We'll see. We'll see. Last week, or this, this week kind of set me behind, so I'm going to be kind of playing catch up for a little bit. By the way, I did put Animania Straw on the floor here just to kind of spruce things up, so... Um, but yeah, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out, and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.